fix errors, waste, and issues in a couple of clicks. Get alerted whenever you're off track. Sign up at trueclicks.com. Wix Studio, the platform for agencies and enterprises to manage clients and projects with max efficiency. Sharing Wix's SEO tech to help you drive growth. So let's start the presentation with some happy faces. So I take a smiley and I hope you will smile too. Nice. So thanks everyone. So um, I have a couple of things really to compliment uh, my two great, uh, amazing uh, uh, speakers that open up the topic about, you know, what is SGE? How does it work? How it might affect your traffic? I have some good numbers to show like in which direction it can go. And my topic is a bit controversial because I believe Google is not going to roll out SGE in its current form. Um, and I will hopefully convince you all. Um, so one of the couple um, data I'm going to use here is based on our ranking factor study. And the reason I'm using the ranking factor study is because if you look at our AI, and in the end, if everything runs on autopilot, you know, content can be created by AI, the website is created by AI, everything is created by AI, there need to be some hard ranking factors that are very hard to manipulate. And that's something I'm going to present here, where I believe Google needs to have these ranking factors because otherwise it's just going to be AI results only. So let's start with some numbers. So this is a study I made about two years ago about um, how many clicks are actually going from Google um, to websites, right? So that means uh, we looked at clickstream data for a couple of million searches. And two years ago, we found that only 45% of all the searches being made resulted in organic clicks. So that means over 50% or more than half of all the clicks already stayed on Google. And now think about SGE. That means Google is going to own the majority of all the clicks that are made on, on its website. And there will be a couple of things um, where we as SEOs will benefit, but at the same time, we have to live with the, this reality because it already is, is here. So what now? Um, there's a term called traffic erosion. That's something, you know, many people talk about. Kevin Indyk, you know, wrote an article uh, a couple of years ago about traffic erosion. But what it actually means is that if you look at the distribution of the different results on the SERP, you know, you have paid ads, uh, you have the knowledge graph, you know, you have uh, frequently asked questions. So you have lots of different things. Uh, you see organic already is like very small. And if Google adds now this generate uh, results button here or have auto generated um, um, SGE results, screen equity is even going to be lower, right? So um, as you can see here, uh, the real estate is shrinking. And if you look at some statistics, Tom had some in his presentation that 81% 80, of queries are shown as SGE result. Most of them have like a button or have some kind of like collapsible kind of like um, result that you can expand. Um, and this is really interesting because you already have um, a lot of um, uh, links that are not going to organic results. And now you have eight to eight to 11 uh, more links um, that Google um, might own and uh, they're not going to result in organic clicks. I don't believe like the traditional ranking factors apply at the moment in SGE because I have like two examples here. On the left side, you see a very popular um, digital camera ratings a page, uh, artings. Um, they have phenomenal ratings um, they have like good backlinks, they have really good user signals. On the right side, you see um, a result that's found in SGE if you search for like, like best digital cameras. And it is new content. They have no backlinks. They actually don't even rank for any organic result. But at the same time, Google is featuring this page uh, in SGE, while the other page with like got lots of really good kind of like user signals is not even being featured in SGE. So this is the current form. If you take a look at especially informational queries, so here is an example, um, how to clean white sneakers. Um, you have New York Times being featured here. If you have SGE turned off, uh, turned on, sorry, you see now this kind of like um, uh, 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 expandable um, SGE result here. And you see that, I mean, um, New York Times like, like got pushed down. And in the future, I, I really see this is one of the main use cases for SG, right? So it's going to replace featured snippets. It's better. It's a feature snippet plus, basically, because like you showed the weather example, it's, it's very similar, right? So I don't need to go to a website, you know, with lots of ads just to learn how I can clean sneakers. Google can tell me. But and now we come to like Google, you know, uh, Google's plan. Google is the fourth largest company in the world. 
Just think about it. It's the fourth largest company. They cannot make mistakes that easily. They can't say, yeah, whatever, we just roll out SGE to the public. There will be less ads, you know. We don't care, it's AI, you know, everybody will like it because the stakeholders that look at real numbers and Google's search business is not growing, right? So they can only grow in revenue coming from search if they show more ads or if they find new ways how they can monetize the services like Google Maps or like, like other ways, you know, what they can do. And that's also the reason why I believe SG in its current form is not going to be released. It's not going to be announced at Google I.O. that everything will be AI. I don't believe so. There will be AI at Google I.O., but not SG. There will be other stuff, which is AI. I think, you know, Google has this um, um, kind of like demand from their stakeholders to grow that Google is not going to uh, look at SGE, they're going to look at uh, the revenue being made in e-commerce because e-commerce, global e-commerce revenue is $5.8 trillion. So this is really where Google is going to make much more money, right? You know, Amazon is going more into advertising business. Google is definitely going in more into e-commerce business. Why? So if you look at this um, search, Adidas sneakers, this is a current search in the US. If you look at uh, the result here, you see shopping ads, you see regular ads, you see adidas.com, the homepage, you see the women's sneakers page, you see uh, another sneaker page, you, you see another sneakers page, the, the kids sneaker page, you see the popular products, you see people also ask, you see another Adidas page about retro sneakers, another Adidas page, two YouTube results, more Adidas, more popular products, and yeah, it, it will stop in, in, in a couple of seconds um, because this, this is like the current result, but if you go into a Foot Locker and you ask like, hey, do you have Adidas sneakers? You know, you get diversity, right? You know, it's like, I have Adidas sneakers, but at the same time, you know, maybe this fits you too, right? Maybe that's also something that might be interested for you. But this is not what Google is doing at the moment. Google, Google has less diversity. Um, oops, oh, there, there it is. And I think it does not reflect how people really like search in, in the real world. And there's one hypothesis I have is because in that moment when you have less diversity, people will click on more ads. If there would be Foot Locker here or Dick Sporting Goods or maybe some others that give diversity and also give people choices, um, people might not click uh, popular products or shopping ads. And this is something I believe Google is doing. And now imagine this. If you do the same search with SG activated, you have here the trigger to generate results. This is how it looks like. I mean, imagine this. I Im imagine this, you know, if you have at the top, like the generated um, text, you have some organic uh, listings and then you have 10 more popular products here. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? So if this is SG and they roll it out like this, Sure, you know, it's just to make more money because they have more um, like, like listings or sponsored listings in here. But there's more to this. There's one thing that Google is pushing a lot, which is the uh, direct checkout button. So there are some like popular retailers already that implemented um, the buy now button. So this is the, the same search for Adidas sneakers. You have here buy now. If you click buy now, it sends you directly to Poshmark here to the checkout page. If you have your um, uh, uh, like favorite um, like like credit card or like like Google Pay or the, uh, PayPal um, in, in here, you can immediately check out. Done. This is it. You know, I'm on Google. I click buy now. I bought it. Done. So this is really something I believe Google is going to go after. But this is not the innovation they're going to announce at Google I/O. That's not the point, right? So for uh, shareholders, everything is AI now. So they will announce crazy AI stuff, but not SGE. But at the same time, this is. Um, I believe what Google is going to push in the future because this e-commerce market is so big and so untapped and with this direct checkout, you know, and the push with popular products, Google is definitely going to um, eat some of the share within this like very big e-commerce market. But let's take a look at some of the ranking factors I believe that are like going to be AI bulletproof. Uh, we made this ranking factor study with lots of ranking factors, some traditional ones, some new ones. So I will guide you through five factors I believe that are going to be AI bulletproof. Let's start with text relevance. You know, Google is using um, embeddings, you know, they're pushing also in the, in the data science com community embeddings a lot, right? OpenAI basically, j the first GPT is based on Google's papers, right? So actually OpenAI exists because Google's data scientists published a lot of their findings they uh, did with RankBrain and then later BERT. Um, 
And that means, you know, if, if, if you create content that's highly relevant according to the query, you know, where you cover, um, you know what embeddings are? I mean, or maybe you heard about word to vec right? It's all about trying to determine if a certain piece of content is relevant to the query. You know, if you search for, I don't know, um, um, a, a, a royal, maybe King Charles come up because it's relevant to the query, you know, s stuff like this. And we found in, in, in our study that especially text relevance, we used um, um, sentence bird and, and palm two to measure the, the um, relevance um, on, on pages. And we, we found that there's a high correlation of better ranking pages with a more relevant text um, to the query. So this is an example. So on the left side, you see here Forbes article for best Bahamas resorts. And this text is, is ranking number one, has a very high relevance score, and it covers the topic holistically. It, it, it really talks about all the different things you can do on the Bahamas. And on the right side here, you have a content which is also long form, very structured, like very um, like visual, but at the same time, it's content from hotel chain. It's written from the me perspective, like what can you do at my hotel? Um, it's not very um, holistic and it doesn't cover the most important things that you can do on the Bahamas, you know, like, like, like fishing and, and like, like spa activities and restaurants. So they rank on position 40. So the point really is that generally you have to really think outside the box, but if you think of AI, you also think of uh, content creation, right? So look at this now. So <laughs> I have some examples. So the Google um, updates. So the, the first uh, co-update in September last year was focusing AI content, many, many pages like CNN, um, no, sorry, CNET, they had a lot of AI content written. They really tanked in the September update last year. But look at this now. So this is an AI site that uh, tanked now with the March update. Um, so they created lots of content. They had a peak and then Google co-update in March hit. Um, they tanked uh, down to zero. But even pages with a track record, right? This page here, filmy feed, with lots of content uh, using AI, even they tanked um, to zero, uh, even having a track record from the past. So. If you really invest in, in, in mass production using AI content, you really have to think about um, what you might create as a risk um, um, to the future. So to sum it up, uh, content quality is important, not just the, like being relevant. Um, so let's talk about one example where I believe content quality is really, really key. And I'm using New York Times Wirecutter as an example here. So they grow like continuously really like 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 months over months which is amazing and they have one like very like natural strategy and and what they do is they they see content not as a pay and pray thing right so i pay for the content and i hope that it will stick and rank so what they do is they care about the content they maintain it they update content on a regular basis so this is an article about best running shoes and this article is updated on a con continuous basis you know they announce when it's updated who has written the content who has tested the products and this article alone ranks for twenty-five thousand keywords and it's continuously growing because they maintain the content it's not written once and that's it it's 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 taken care of over time the next ranking factor, I believe, which is going to survive the age of AI are backlinks. There you go, right? So when we talked about uh, backlinks, maybe at the first Brighton here many years ago, many people, I'm sure, talked about how to build backlinks. And that's, that's interesting that we are here at backlinks again. But first of all, we still see a good correlation of like backlinks. I'm using here domain authority as a proxy uh, with correlation with rankings. That means pages that rank better typically have more links or more qualitative links. But at the same time, I truly believe that links are going to matter in the future, um, even in the AI case, because it's very easy to produce content in the future. It's going to be easy to produce videos uh, uh, like you, you, you've seen Sora, right? The examples that OpenAI published. So producing content is going to be easy getting highly relevant, sorry, highly relevant links is going to be very, very hard. Um, so let's skip through this a little bit. So there's another one. So just think about this New York Times article. So we also found like a good correlation with pages that cover topics, cover topics holistically. So that means if you rank on number one, for example, for best running shoes, you have a very high chance that surrounding keywords, you also rank very, very high. So what this chart actually means here is that if you if you earn already like good rankings for some terms, you have a four to five times higher chance to also have good rankings for other terms. Let me give an example here. So on the left, you see the Lonely Planet um, here for Cinque Terre. Um, 
term like here, here um, for like sightseeing stuff in Italy. And on the right side, you see another page who also created like really good content. But at the same time, the Lonely Planet ranks um, for 1,500 keywords uh, for the, with this just single page. And the other page, which ranks on position 10 for Cinque Terre, ranks for five times uh, less keywords. Sure, it might be just an example that I picked, but the point really is if you focus on writing longer form holistic content, it's well structured, you can earn many more rankings um, over time. Now let's talk about the next thing. You know, Google uh, pushed Core Web Vitals about two years ago. Everyone was like screaming, you know, oh my God, you know, my page is too slow. We have to do something. But then, you know, Google kind of like, like used them in their ranking system and nothing happened, you know. <laughs> um, but the point really is, if you look at AI and going forward, if it's easy to produce content, it's definitely going more important to have a good user experience. So one of the factors we definitely have seen which correlates to rankings here is server response time. It's just one proxy because I believe generally having a good, fast, responsive website is going to be a key. And if everyone can produce good content, having a fast, really good, responsive website is going to be maybe like this, this one signal that makes sure um, that, that you uh, outperform uh, your competitor. The next one, I think that's the last one I have here in, in, uh, in for these five ranking factors is user signals. I mean, this is really hard to fake, right? So if you're logged in, in Chrome, you have a Google account, you have a track record, you know, Google knows you and you visit websites, for example, directly. I go to Lonely Planet directly without Google and Google sees it because Google has Chrome, they have Google Analytics, uh, Google has a Google Cloud Platform, right? Google has CDN. So Google basically sees everything, basically, maybe not in China but or North Korea, but everywhere else. And because of this, Google knows like what's the direct traffic share, you know, what's the bounce rate, time on site, what's actually the quality of, of a certain website. And it's really interesting. So we, we, we've seen like there's a measurable correlation um, of like user signals. We're using here the direct traffic share. So that means pages with more direct traffic. So a higher share of direct traffic, they tend to have better rankings, which makes sense, right? So of course, it doesn't mean it's a direct ranking signal, but it means pages who actually get users naturally without search, um, maybe through bookmarks or maybe other channels, or again, just directly, they tend to rank higher. All right, so I think um, generally for us as an SEO, the job often is that we are like a detective, right? So, you know, we go to a crime scene and we have to find like clues and patterns and and then just come up with some ideas. Um, I think, you know, looking at ranking factors is important also for the future, especially if AI basically gives us all the same weapons. Um, we have to think of what's uh, very hard to manipulate. So I have three minutes left. Um, so have we reached the SEO singularity? No, I don't think so. I really think that human plus AI is going to be the key. I'm 100% I'm sure that this will always outperform pure AI. Um, you have seen that, that human quality content is going to um, like rank well. You know, the New York Times example, Lonely Planet is like just, just one of them. You've seen that Google is now penalizing AI only pages. Um, I also believe because of Google's pushing EEAT, right, that Google wants to make sure that you had the real experience, like that you really are the expert in a certain field. And this is going to be the core differentiator if you want to rank well in the future even if there's our SGE rolled out because also in SGE, Google has to make sure that they do not show crap, right? Hallucination is a problem. So they have to make sure that the results they show are actually really um, valid. And we all know your money or life is going to be a little bit different. So we might not see uh, SGE that much for your money or life um, results that this is where search might stay a little bit um, different. Um, just some statistics. So visions of um, tomorrow's search. I mean, we all talk about uh, perplexity AI or Brave is you know, pushing very hard AI in their browser. Um, open AI uh, was considered when it came out a potential replacement for search. But if you look at traffic curves here, so the first curve is openair.com. They have now like a steady traffic curve. I do believe many companies use their API, which is not reflected in their web traffic, of course, but the web traffic is now like basically flat, not growing anymore. Um, the second curve here is perplexity AI. So this is continuously growing. And the last one here is google.com. But between OpenAI and Google, there's one, there's a factor of 100x. And between per perplexity and AI and Google, there's a factor of, I think, 10,000 um, X. So the, the point really is that um, 
I don't see any big contender yet to Google. You know, Google has a 91% market share, even if traffic to Google is not growing, which is not growing since many years, right? So this is has not changed. Um, none of these competitors like OpenAI or Perplexity or Brave Browser and so on, they are being even. Like how much traffic is being bringing to you? Like, is it a lot? Has it grown like through like Bing's co-pilot and so on? No, it hasn't. So that's why I think um, AI is going to grow significantly, but typically on things like automation, it's going to grow in B2B. It's not going to replace search. So I know it, still it's super unclear, it's super exciting, but at the same time, we have less certainty than ever. Um, but I believe, you know, um, Google cannot change from one day to another. People are slow, you know, we have habits. Uh, it will take very, very long for people to adopt. And I have not seen, like like my mother, you know, going to open her eye and, you know, putting in a prompt and then, you know, saying like, yay, you know, that's, that's, that, that, that's not how it happened. So um, thank you all. Um, let's, let's have a great brightness here and yeah, thanks for listening. Demand Sphere. Limitless visual insights from the SERPs. Unlimited dashboards and users. Easy to use and easy to scale your growth to new levels. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 